Hey, Mr. Woodard. Hope your spring break was as nice and relaxing as mine was. My case study focuses on the Lance Armstrong doping scandal and how social media influenced the way his allegations and eventual admission caused an outrage throughout the entire sports community in America and around the world. Armstrong was, of course, known for winning seven Tour de France's in a row from 1999 to 2005 and was widely renowned for accomplishing this historical run after he had beaten testicular cancer in 1997. Armstrong became one of the leading activists in the world for cancer research shortly after founding the Lance Armstrong Foundation in 2004. His foundation marketed the widely popular Live Strong campaign, which sold millions of yellow bracelets with all the profits going to cancer awareness and research. To recap the events, authors David Walsh and Pierre Ballester were the first to accuse Lance of taking performance-enhancing drugs. In their book titled L.A. Confidential, The Secrets of Lance Armstrong, they cited Emma O'Reilly, a former member of Armstrong's U.S. Postal Service pro cycling team, claiming Lance asked her to dispose of used needles and provide him with makeup to cover syringe marks on his arms. O'Reilly, who worked with Lance as his physical therapist and personal assistant for three and a half years, stated that Armstrong used a banned substance called erythroprotein or EPO. Armstrong quickly denied the allegations and provided a statement on his website announcing he was going to sue the authors. Armstrong retired from cycling after his seventh and final Tour de France victory. In 2006, a year after his retirement, another American named Floyd Landis won the Tour de France, but then lost his title quickly after testing positive for his synthetic testosterone. Because of Floyd's positive test, many once again turned their questions to Lance as accusations were still looming over his seven titles. Amid the allegations, Armstrong made a comeback attempt from 2009 to 2011 and most notably finished third in the Tour de France in 2000. In 2012, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency charged him with using PEDs, with Armstrong responding to the allegations the same way he responded to the first, by refusing to take part in the arbitration process and suing the USADA. However, the judge threw Armstrong's suit out after USADA presented detailed eyewitness accounts of Lance using PEDs and pressuring teammates to use them as well. The USADA banned Armstrong for life and stripped him of all seven of his prominent Tour de France titles. Four months after his lifetime banishment, Lance admitted he had used PEDs during his entire career in a special interview with Oprah Winfrey. Armstrong, excuse me, Armstrong proclaimed he began using EPO and blood transfusions during the mid-90s. He also admitted to bullying teammates and those he worked with to lie about it and that the illegal substances aided him in winning every single event that he ever participated in, including the seven Tour de France titles in a row. I remember watching the interview, and although like the rest of the world, I had sensed it coming, but the way Armstrong portrayed his admission royally pissed me off. Growing up, I was a huge supporter of Lance, his bracelets, and his supposed amazing career. I remember watching it back in Sicily and looking at my then fiance with a look of distraught and, uh, well, somewhat, actually, no, much disappointment as I exited the room. I came back in a few minutes later and finished watching what was left of the interview. You could tell that he was holding information back, he was uncomfortable sitting there, and just had a sense about him that he just wasn't going to tell the truth. Which everyone, including Oprah, already knew anyway. I refuse to rewatch it to this day and probably never will again unless I absolutely, positively have to. Because when I found out about it, it just hurt so much that someone I revered greatly growing up in my youth had lied to myself and the entire world about his great accomplishments. The Twitter world blew up with high-profile figures and regular citizens such as you or myself from all aspects of our global economies. It didn't matter who you were. Odds have it, you were not happy and probably felt very similar to the majority of those who heard the comments from Lance, including myself. I will never respect this man again for what he did, and although I'll always revere the Live Strong campaign for its efforts on cancer research, the entire foundation was built on one of the biggest lies in sports history. I apologize if this comes off as crude, but go to hell, Lance.